Hello everyone, welcome back to our small section on optimization for machine learning. What we have focused on until now was the question how to iteratively update our weights of some machine learning model, let's say a neural network, could also be a linear model even though we have closed form solutions there. But this scheme just gives us an, a general setting of how to update our weights until we have the best model, so the minimum of our loss function value. And what we saw were the ingredients of a descent direction which we consider to be the steepest descent direction in all our considerations until now. We talked about stochastic gradient descent. If this is too expensive to just take a single sample instead of the entire um, set of samples that we have. And we had this uh, step length. Well, we talked also learning rate in machine learning, which determines how far we move along this descent direction. So what we have considered is a suitable direction, a hopefully suitable step length, and then the question how we can reduce the cost if this is expensive. And so what I would like to address here is the question how many iterations do we need until this converges, or show you an issue, what, what we can observe um, in, in particular situations. And let's say this was not the perfect step size, but a fixed one that we have chosen. This is frequently the case in, in deep learning, for instance, because having schemes to find an optimal step length, you know, we have to pay for this. And so usually there's fixed rules of updating this, either letting it, letting it to stay constant over the entire time or having a constant reduction maybe. And so what can happen is, let's say we have two weights, so a very simplistic uh, setting, and this was our loss function landscape. Okay, so these are level sets, meaning that at every of these lines, we have a constant value of the loss function, which decreases into this valley. And so we start with an initial guess of our weights that has a particular loss, which is not optimal. Uh, otherwise, it would be a very lucky initial guess. And now let's assume we have a step length that is not optimal, but this takes us some, some way. Okay, so... Descent always means it's orthogonal, steepest descent. It's orthogonal to these level sets, right? This means constant, so the steepest direction is precisely orthogonal to this. And now we take this step length and say it's maybe a little bit too long. So this is our W1. And the rule is exactly as we have written it here, W1 is W0 plus this fixed eta times our v0, so the gradient evaluated at the initial guess. And so now we do this again, right, following this update rule. And you see what, what we have, the descent direction is orthogonal to this level set line, so it goes like this. Right? And maybe we don't go as far as we did here because the value of the gradient is smaller, so the step lengths do decrease, but and let's say even though the eta was fixed, this can decrease because this is not a normed length. So now we go here. This is our W1. And you see immediately what happens. We go like this. We update and maybe go like this. We update. We land here. And so on. And hopefully in the end we will, after a large number of iterations, find this minimum. Right? And if we're talking about theory, then even if you can guarantee that you have a descent, there's often no statement in how many iterations we will converge. And what you see here is, you know, visually, you can see it's this zigzagging behavior, and this is exactly what it's known for. So what we have is this zigzagging. And this obviously poses an issue because you see we have to evaluate gradients a lot of times. We have to update our weights many times. So this is not particularly efficient. And this brings us to the topic of our presentation. Um, what about momentum? Or I will tell you in a second what this means. What is the idea behind momentum? And so the idea is um, basically drawn from Let's say, let's consider a very simple setting. You have a ball, a rock, and it's rolling down the slope. And so you see, um, as we can expect, right, it starts rolling and it picks up pace along the way. 
So it gathers momentum, right? So by its mass and by its velocity, so it will speed up along the way. And so this is somewhat of the idea also behind these momentum-based methods. Um, I've not picked this arbitrarily, but they are also sometimes named as heavy ball methods, particular for this analogy. And the idea is simply to take into account some memory. This is exactly what's happening here, right? The ball is going down the hill or the slope, and it remembers, if we say so, uh, its, it's, it's step it has taken before, it gathers momentum, and this is, be u is used to, to accelerate the, the movement downhill. And so here's the idea. Let's gather momentum also in optimization. So what we can do is, we just add a term, maybe a second step length parameter, kappa, times the update that we have done in the last time step. Okay, So here's a little bit of the idea. This momentum means we just remember what we did last time and somehow add this to our update. So we take momentum. If we did something in the last step, we remember it and, and reapply it. So what you see here, let's look at this example here. This is our V0. And this was our update for, for, v, uh, for W1, V0 in this direction, W1. And now the step uh, we take in the second time would be W2, which is W1 plus theta times V1, which is exactly this second line, which is going rather steeply towards the top. And now we add this term, plus kappa, some tuning parameter, times V0. And what you see, V0 is, ah, it's this direction. And so it points close to the opposite direction exactly of what we had before. So what you see is, instead of going uphill, the V1 direction only, we add a little bit of this direction and make this our, you know, our update. So we add something here, right, and now this is a little bit unfortunate because these are these two lines are parallel, but what we really have is that this blue line here is a parallel line to this because it's precisely the V0, the direction we had in the last step, and this is something we multiply with a tuning parameter kappa, usually something smaller than one, and so instead of going in the zigzagging behavior, what we can do now is we are going to go like this maybe. And so you see, this is a particularly improved situation to what we had before. And now if you look at this, this is now our v, uh, v, V1 direction. So this would sum up as our V1. And so what you see is you gather momentum in the, the situation where you move along the, the same direction. So let's consider a case where we start in a particularly favorable situation. We start here, okay? And so our V1 or our V0 is taking us in this direction. And so the V2, sorry, this is V0, this would be V1, takes us in the same direction. But because we add some momentum from the step before, this will give us a joint improvement of this one. So you see precisely what we had in this heavy ball idea here. We're gaining momentum if we move into consecutively into the same direction or similar directions, which meaning we accelerate like this heavy ball rolling down the slope. If we have this sort of um, this valley, very sharp gradients in one direction and very slow or small gradients in, in the other direction, we have that this friction, you know, smoothens out the zigzagging behavior through the valley and, and takes us along the, the smaller but more meaningful gradient direction. So it accelerates in good direction. It helps to mitigate the zigzagging behavior in not so favorable directions. And so this is something that is very, very important in, in training deep neural networks in particular, because these updates or these momentum updates really reduce the number of iterations quite significantly. And so this one is the, the basic one, this type of momentum, but there are more general ways to, to have this.
So what do I mean by more general? You, you just say that our update w is the previous w, so the w at the ith iteration, plus, and now I'm going to put this in quotation marks, our momentum update. So what do, do I mean by this? If I make the simplest setting and I just take this to be V, then I do not consider momentum. This would be our gradient descent. If I put into this momentum update this first order moment is what it's called, then I have what I've you know, added here and what I've sketched here in blue. But I can also add higher order moments. So what I could do is I could try not to fit a, a linear function to the past, but maybe a quadratic function and so on. So I can come up with all sorts of momentum criteria. And maybe I'm going to mention one before we finish. The most popular one, and those of you who are somewhat familiar with, with deep learning already may have heard of this. This is the Adam algorithm, which is due to Ingma and Bar. Sorry, Bar. So in case you use, let's say, PyTorch or TensorFlow or whatever toolbox you want to use to train your neural network or Flux and Julia, then for training, you will use the Adam algorithm as a default. Obviously, you can change this, but this is what we, what we do. And what it's called, or what the abbreviation stands for, is Adaptive Moment. estimation. Right, and I'm not going to go into the details here because this takes quite some time to derive, but the concept is this. You take additional terms in this adaptive moment uh, estimation, you take this momentum term and you will take a quadratic term to even have a better, you know, sort of memory of, of the past. And this is what has prevailed for the past 10 years as the most efficient algorithm for training deep neural networks. So with this, I hope you have a very good you know, starting intuition how momentum works. And we will continue with the next video with the question of how many iterations do we actually need until we have some idea of convergence. Thank you.